suggest that anything approximating um, payment of interest, uh, payment of tax due or claimed by the commissioner uh, plus interest uh, plus penalties was paid in that settlement is materially false. Just remind people as to how long that uh, dispute between Paul Hogan, uh, you were involved on his behalf, and the tax office went on for? Well, it all started with Eglishaw's laptop being searched, uh, being seized on Valentine's Day in 2004. Um, the activity from the commissioner ramped up in around the uh, beginning of 2006, late 2005, early 2006. Um, assessments, I think, were issued in about 2010, um, and settlements were reached a few years after that. So um, the, it, it went for the better part of a decade in, in a wider sense. The other thing that the tax commissioner said today was that unlike what he claimed was said in the interview between you and I uh, last week, that uh, Hogan was exonerated uh, as a result of the final settlement with the tax office, uh, he somehow seemed to dispute that or seemed to indicate that was not the situation. Just explain what it was at the end. Well, well, it's a very odd comment for the Commissioner to make because he should know that he has absolutely no power to adjudicate on criminal matters. The only person who can deal with um, criminal matters in the federal scene is the uh, Director of Public Prosecutions. Now, um, any civil settlement that you reach with the ATO can't stop um, criminal proceedings because um, the, only, the only person who can give that kind of pardon is the Attorney General. So I guess you sit back and say, well, no, there was no formal deed exonerating Hogan but you're talking about now being 13, 14 years after the start um, and no one has made any allegation of criminality or taken any action. And in fact, you may recall in one of the biggest ACC leaks that took place, the ACC has actually confirmed that there isn't sufficient evidence to pursue Hogan. So it's all in writing. You would have been in touch with Paul Hogan today. What's his reaction? He's furious. Firstly, he doesn't know why he's being dragged back into this. But secondly, to infer that um, he, he made a commercial settlement to stop criminal proceedings being successful against him. Uh, that, that's so untrue, as are the allegations that he, he paid the majority of what the commission was, was claiming. I had, to, Ross, I had to buy a new calculator to run this case because um, I needed a 12-digit calculator to, 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 to add up the claims that the commission was, um, was making. Now, if, if, if he says that a significant part of that was was paid as part of the settlement, he should read the deed. And I mean, I challenge him, why doesn't he give me the okay to release the terms of the deed and we'll show the public exactly what happened in the settlement and, the, and your listeners will be surprised. Andrew Robinson from Robinson Legal representing Paul Hogan in that case that went on for more than a decade. And of course, those comments in that Senate inquiry today uh, basically sprung out of the interview that we did with him last week. And Andrew, as always, we appreciate your time.